I'm Joe Lample. When I created Growing a Greener World, I had one goal, to tell stories of everyday people, innovators, entrepreneurs, forward-thinking leaders, who are all, in ways both big and small, dedicated to organic gardening and farming, lightening our footprint, conserving vital resources, protecting natural habitats, making a tangible difference for us all. They're real, they're passionate, they're all around us. They're the game changers who are literally growing a greener world and inspiring the rest of us to do the same. Growing a greener world, it's more than a movement, it's our mission. If someone's interested in farming or homesteading or just living off the land, it can be difficult to know where to even begin, especially if you've never lived on a farm before or don't have somebody to guide you. But one way around that problem is to enroll in a school where you get that hands-on experience. And today, there are many such schools across the country. The farm school at Maggie's Farm in Athol, Massachusetts is one such place. It was founded in 1989 based on the belief that the experience and values once nourished by small farms remain vital to our culture today. The student farmers live and work on the 180-acre farm full-time for an entire year. Along the way, they're guided through the seasons in every aspect of working the land, from raising crops, animals and bees, to homesteading skills, and even extensive classroom time and field trips. And through their journey, many find that they grow and change themselves, right along with the rhythm of the farm. Ben Holmes is the founder of the Farm School. He and a group of like-minded friends established this hands-on training program for adults 10 years ago. Today, the school accepts up to 12 students a year, where they help run the sustainable farm, market and sell the produce, meat and eggs to the community, and learn about what it takes to live this organic lifestyle. I started the Farm School 22 years ago in order to give children the gift that my uncles had given me when I was a kid growing up on their family farm in northeastern Ohio. They had involved me in the work of the farm from a very early age and had given me a sense of responsibility and a sense of being part of something bigger than myself uh, that was an extraordinary gift to a young person. Um, as a result, I felt really connected to the very texture of the natural world around me and uh, it's affected me my whole life. From the very start, our programs for children have engaged the children directly in the work of the farm. And uh, it's been a huge uh, success for both children and adults to come. About 10 years in, we realized that we could indeed expand our, our teaching into the adult world. And we based our, the program that we were designing very much on the way in which my uncles had trained me as a young man to take over our family farm. The students that come here come from all over the map, uh, from all over the country, but also any number of different ages and backgrounds. Uh, we have people who are coming right out of school, from out of high school, out of college, but the majority of people are coming somewhere into their career and they figured out that they indeed want to do something different with their lives. Farming for me is, uh, is complete engagement in the world um, and it's, uh, it's of course been my life since I was a, a kid and the thing that I always return to um, is definitely uh, kind of the feel of, of the world, something that soaks into your very pores. Throughout the year, every day and in every way, students learn to farm by farming. Growing food for a 175-member CSA and vibrant farmer's market, tending to the livestock for a 50-member meat CSA, and managing 150 acres of productive forest land is the core of life and learning on the farm. Life on any farm starts early and it goes late, and on this farm, one of the first tasks is to milk the cow, and as a student farmer, everyone learns to do that. So what's the basics? I know we have to walk before we run, which means yeah, well, they... What uh, you want to do is um, the hand you're going to milk with at the top, you want to squeeze the top of the teeth and hold that pressure.
Okay, so we're pulling onto one of the uh, parcels of land. It's still fairly early in the morning, it's nice and cool, and in the morning is when you want to pick all the delicate greens, like the arugula and mesclun, because if you let them sit too long, the heat from the sun will, uh, will make them a little more vulnerable. You don't want that to happen. So what we're going to do is we're going to pick all the delicate greens first, get them back to the, uh, to the barn and kind of dunk them in um, cool water to refresh them and put them in storage and send them off to CSAs and farmers markets. It's, it's just like that, guys. So let's uh, you know, pull up the bootstraps and get started. Whoa, whoa. <laughs> Now the first harvest of the day was listed as mesclun. Now mesclun isn't an individual crop, it's a mix of microgreens. And so here we are on this row, and it's a long row, but let me just tell you what we're cutting here. Now right now this is baby bok choy, and then we have some mustard greens in here. And the fact that this is organic, you can just trample it. Mm -mm -mm. We have some kale, and we have arugula. Now all of this is being cut and it's thrown into the mix. Now what's cool about this, all of this is only about 24 to 28 days from seed to harvest. And this is the second cutting. The first cutting took place, everything was cut down like you see right here. But because we didn't cut the growing tip, that's way down at the base where you have these young tender cotyledons coming up, that's the baby leaves. A week later, it looks like this again. So you get a lot of pro productivity out of this space. And speaking of productivity, there's a couple ways to harvest. Now I'm using scissors. I was given a choice between scissors and knives. Now Betsy, you're using a knife. Tell me about why you like to use the knife better. Well, uh, I just think it's quicker and cleaner to go straight across. Mm -hmm. And uh, everybody just has to pick their weapon and figure out what works best for them. I tried scissors and it just didn't work well enough for me. So it's a little humbling to come out here and think that you can just, you know, use a knife or your scissors and cut away at this and make an impact or a dent in the bin, but uh, not so much. You look at the pros down here and look how much they've already done. <laughs> Where's Nathan? <laughs> Nathan and I are, uh, you know, an hour later, we've made about a foot or two progress. But, you know, it's important here because you don't want to collect any of the leaves and uh, weeds and because this is an organic farm, you know, you're going to have some weeds mixed in all through here especially after you make that first cut. This is actually the second cut on a lot of this. And when you clear away the foliage from the produce, it opens up the area to sunlight, which is just an imitation for the weeds to grow. So on the second cut, which is where we're at right now, you have to be a lot more careful to make sure that the weeds don't make it into the bin as well. But, uh, you know, I guess technically we're making progress, right, Nathan? <laughs> we are. Well, I mean, we st to be honest, we started from, from over here where you saw this little tuft. I've made this much progress and they're about, what, 40 or 50 feet down that way. This is not easy work, guys, which means that when you go to your farmer's market or the CSA and you get these beautiful bags of mescaline and fresh greens that have been picked the day before or that day, use them with purpose. Really appreciate the amount of effort that it took to, to garden and harvest this stuff because this is not easy work. I'll tell you, it's not easy work, but it is very fulfilling. Once farming gets in your blood, it usually stays there. And many of the school's alumni remain in farming still. And then there's Patrick Connors. In the early years of the school, he was one of their student farmers. Today, he's the school's director. In addition to overseeing operations, he's one of the teachers, and it's not unusual to catch him still doing a bit of the farm work. Our students learn a whole range of skills. Probably the, the core of the program is centered around our vegetable production and our animal husbandry. Um, but really everything that falls in between is part of the program. So that means a lot of carpentry skills and uh, chainsaw maintenance and chainsaw skills. And we do quite a bit of work in our forest. We have a big wood lot here, so a lot of work in the forest. Um, we do some home gardening skills, just hand, working, learning how to use hand tools. Uh, everything from that to electrical, plumbing, welding. Um, when things break, we do our best to fix them, and that just makes good, good sense for a farmer who's uh, out in the world 
um, as a new farmer especially if they don't have to pay to get someone in there to, to break, fix something when it breaks then they're saving money. In addition to the practical skills that our students gain here in a year, uh, the, some of the classroom based stuff is something we've introduced probably more in the last several years as, as small scale diversified farming has become a real viable profession for, for people out in the world. So um, business planning is a, is a big part of the, what we do in the winter months, crop planning. Um, and in addition to that business planning, that includes you know, taxes, farm taxes, and um, writing a business plan, cash flows on a farm, and we try to make it pretty farm specific. Um, but those skills, are, are we've, we've realized, are really important to, to our new farmers heading out into the world. So um, certainly the bulk of the, the year is still spent out in the fields, in the muck, doing the work. Um, but the business planning and those, those classes are pretty important too. Um, I came here about 10 years ago and I really fell in love with the work just as much as the, the community here. I'm just really kind people and in fact that is the one rule in our visiting school program down the road for kids when they come here which is pretty radical is to be kind and that really permeates the whole organization. Um, so it's a really warm place to work and there's not a lot of talk about kind of why we're doing it. We, it's just really nice people who get to work and uh, do great work and enjoy enjoy the hard work. So I think that's people who really, working with people who really love hard work um, and love sharing that with others is what drew me here and what keeps me here today. We have a real range of students who come here. I think the, the majority of them uh, come because they want to learn how to farm and they want to farm on their own. Um, whether on an existing piece of property or a family piece of property. Um, but we definitely have students who come because they just want to learn how to feed their family and grow food for themselves. Um, so those homesteading skills that we teach here are pretty important for them. Um, and we have this w wonderful opportunity for students to learn from our education programs, which are just a mile down the road. Um, so we always have a few teacher types, maybe who've been teachers in a classroom setting and are looking to break out of that a little bit. And, incorporate some farm skills into their teaching. So in the course of a year, do you think that the students leave here really feeling equipped to just sort of take the bull by the horns and start their own farm? Uh, certainly some do, and some do just that and leave here and start their own farms. Others um, maybe feel like they need to spend another year on a, another apprentice type situation on other farms, assistant farm manager type work. Um, but certainly everybody leaves feeling like it's been demystified a little bit and they, with the confidence to, to go out and like that they could do it, that they could be farmers on their own. And then there's also that time where they can sort of specialize in an area that they really feel an attraction to and also rule out things they don't like. Yeah, all students have a little bit of time during the course of the year to, to focus on areas they like. It could be um, straight up vegetable production, it might be welding, it could be uh, carpentry skills. Um, so there's a little bit of time in the program to, to focus on areas that they, the students really want to dive into after the program. Okay. You know, I think I've got all the peppers that I can get from here. What's next? Let's take it to the wash-up room and go have lunch. <laughs> <laughs> Deal. Great idea. So the harvest after lunch, potatoes, and the process goes like this. You come in with a digging fork and you go way down underneath the plant to basically loosen the roots. And then you can pull the plant out. And there, see there, there's some potatoes. And the rest of the team comes along and digs up the rest of them by hand. That's so that you don't damage them. Now there's a particular reason why we're going with this variety of harvest on the potatoes today. It's a variety called Vinji and it's got some problems. It's a common problem that is susceptible to a lot of varieties of potato, but it's caused by a leaf hopper. So the leaf hopper causes some damage to the foliage and there's toxins in their saliva that basically breaks down the tissue and it makes the plant less productive because the plant can no longer photosynthesize. And so it's a good time to go ahead and dig these potatoes up because beyond this they're really not going to produce anything bigger but these potatoes are still perfect, they're gorgeous, they taste delicious and we've got a lot of these coming up today.
All right, here we go. Now we found some. Okay, we have these beautiful, fresh potatoes right from the earth. But how do you store them properly? Well, they like the earth, which is cool and dark. So what we want to try to do is recreate that at home for you. What I like to do is take a brown paper bag, put the potatoes in there, and then put the actual bag inside of a cabinet where it's nice and dark and cool, usually a lower cabinet. And then in the brown paper bag, you can cut a small square out of it, so when you open the cabinet, you just reach your hand in, grab a few potatoes out, and they're nice and dry and they're healthy. That is the best way to store fresh potatoes so they'll last the longest. Delicious. Okay, so farming is hard work, no question about that, but it's a lot of fun and very rewarding and not bad exercise either. But if you want to learn more about the farm school or farming in your own backyard, we have some great links on our website, and the address is the same as our name. It's growingagreenerworld.com. After harvesting, the students prepare all the produce for either their CSA, where customers can either pick up the weekly allotment at the farm or various drop-off sites in town, while the rest is sold at a farmer's market. It's an important part of the practical and classroom study. For months, they've been planning everything involved in getting their crops to market, from deciding on what to grow, ordering the right amounts of seeds, estimating yields and the land required, and getting it to harvest. And it's the culmination of a lot of hard work. They even train in the branding, product display, and relationship building with their customers. All right, guys, this is what it's all about. A hard day's work for some of the freshest produce you can get. This is their local CSA box. It's like filled with these beautiful gems. We have green beans. When you get them home, leave them in the brown paper bag and store them in the fridge. Then wash them just before you eat them. If you wash them ahead of time, they're more prone to mold. We don't want that. Ooh, beautiful carrots, okay? The carrots, when you get them home, you want to take the greens off because the greens are sapping all that sugar and flavor out of the carrot. We want all the flavor to remain in the carrot. We have the potatoes. We have these beautiful turnips. But these are little ones. Eat them raw, thinly sliced, and then keep the turnip greens. These are beautiful in a salad. You can eat everything. We have kale. We have the mescaline. We have potatoes. You know what? There's so much stuff in here, all locally grown and all seasonal. If you go to growingagreenerworld.com, I will have a site for you. Put in your zip code and you can find out what local CSAs are there for you. Well, this was an incredible experience. All the great people that we met, the hard work, and the many lessons that we learned while we were here. That's right, but hard work that always ends up with delicious meals. And it speaks to the founding principles of this farm school, that the values you find in a small farm environment are more important today than ever. I could not have said that any better. And if you'd like to learn more, you can find it on our website, and the address is the same as our name. It's growingagreenerworld.com. I'm Joe Lample. And I'm Nathan Lyon. And we'll see you back here next time for more Growing a Greener World.